onto a cool plate. We'll stop the cooking immediately. There's oils. Yeah, we'll continue cooking these things anyway. You want to check in on our. Hmm. It's a little hot. <laughs> holder. So, what you do is you grab your sleeve, right? See how it's nice and dry in there? Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a little panada out of egg and a touch of breadcrumb. And our pine nuts, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And we're going to make our quasi duck cell to go inside our meatloaf. Okay, so now I'm going to throw the duck cell together. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in an egg white. I don't necessarily need the yolk. All I need the white for is to hold everything together. However, I'm going to keep the yolk and save it for my meatloaf. Alright, rinse off that albumin. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is throw in a little bit of panko breadcrumbs. I'm using panko in this case so that I can get a little bit of uh, uh, body, uh, a little bit more uh, yield out of my mushrooms. Alright. You know, these things are terrific. Uh, I don't use parsley often enough. This gourmet garden, it's great. It's made in California. It's uh, an organic product and it lasts. And mm, it's delicious. It's must delicioso. All right, a kitchen must is a cheese grater. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I like the way it holds things together. I like the way it adds in the salt and the flavor that I love so much. Get it in there. Alright, it's good enough for now. I'm going to save this for the uh, roast beef. A little bit of salt, a little more pepper. What about time this afternoon? I need a touch of time. Hang on a second. I don't know where the hell I put it. I guess I didn't buy it, so I gotta change courses just a little bit and put in a little bit of rub sage. Sage goes just as nicely with mushrooms as thyme does. Not too much. Uh, if I get the lid back on. Alright. And you just take a nice small spoon. Just mix that all together. Egg's gonna bind it up once it starts to cook inside the oven, inside the roast. Throw in your pine nuts. Not too many, you don't want to overwhelm it. That's not the point. And this is a nice little mix that's gonna hold together on the inside, and I'll show you that in the next step. While you're uh stuffing cold beef, you want to try and get your mix as cold as possible before you put it in there. I've already got my egg yolk in there, right? I'm going to drop in one more egg. Alright, uh, a little bit of pepper. A little bit. You want to use a decent amount. I've got uh, 1.66 pounds in here of meat. Uh, bit of kosher salt, a touch of garlic, always want a tomato product, whether it's a tablespoon of the Hunt's tomato paste, not Hunt's, whoever you want to use, tomato paste, I like to use ketchup because it's very simple, use like a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons, uh, a couple of shots of la choy. Uh, whoa, holy moly, there was no top on that. All right, so <laughs> if that happens, what you do is you hold everything back and get rid of some of it. All right, so you know what? That means that I'm not going to need any more salt on anything. Holy crap. All right. And speaking of no more salt, Parmesan cheese. Usually put in like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. Alright. In this case, I'm using regular breadcrumbs because I don't want that fluffiness in the meat. I only want it in the center. Uh, touch of parsley. 
out of a bottle. All right, normally I would use thyme, but you know what? I forgot it. So I got to use uh, sage and uh, I'm going to use a little bit of dry mustard today. About a teaspoon and a half of sage, a teaspoon of dry mustard. All right, and the last thing that I want, and this time I'm going to check the top. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, and that, just a couple of shots. You don't want that much, you don't want to overwhelm it. Alright? Alright. And then, you put it together. And the best thing to do is to do it by hand. And don't close your breadcrumbs, because now the trick is to get the meatloaf mixed together as quickly as possible so you don't heat it up. Because the more you heat the fat in the meatloaf, the more apt you are to have a gristly, tough meatloaf. Do it as quickly as possible. And the only purpose for the breadcrumbs is to make the meat feel back to being meat, not wet from the egg. The second it feels dry again like meat, which it does now, Alright, so now i got everything mixed together. I'm going to wash up my hand so I don't cross-contaminate the bottom of my bowl. And if you are able to do this, this is my suggestion for getting it into a bowl. You ready? Let's see what we can do. I take it like this. Flip it in there. You want to push it away from yourself and bring it toward yourself. Uh, you see how it starts to make its nice shape in there in the bowl? You want to try and use your hands as little as possible. This is preparing you for the next step. Alright, you see this right here? This is another kitchen must-have. That other crap that you get in the store, this stuff... Hold on a second. Plastic wrap? Garbage. Total garbage. It's all crap. I don't even know why it's here. I know why it's here, because I didn't go shopping that day. Anyway, enough about my miserable life. Oi, the problems of a crappy kitchen. This is a kitchen must-have. I don't care whose brand it is, it needs to be commercial. Alright? So, to stuff a meatloaf properly, you pull yourself out a nice longer size than the width. All right. Treat it gently because once it folds up, she's not coming back. All right. Take your meatloaf, dump her out, straighten her up a little bit. Try to touch her as little as possible. First of all, you don't want to be touching everything with the meaty hands. All right. Cut yourself another piece. Wrap her down here. Now. You could take the fast way, the easy way, or the lazy way. I take all three. I take either a pan or a cutting board or something, and I just push her down into an even space. That's an even, even width, all right? The next thing I do, I push it down the width and size that I want. And what you really want is you want a good try, a good rectangle. That's what you ultimately want. Alright. Are you with me? So we're working on a rectangle, right? Spread it down. Like I said, quick if you can. Alright, and what you want to do is you want to make the ends a little bit thinner because they're going to meet up. All right, make the ends a little bit thinner. And then, if you have a rolling pin, which everybody should have, another kitchen must have. It comes in handy for so many things, especially keeping people in line. All right, and you just make yourself a little trench here. So what you got is thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. All right, and 
going to try and make that even out there, even out here. All right. So now you got your trenches, and you've got your even spots. And now comes the magic. All right. You lift off the top. Get those thinner because those are going to meet up at the end. That's all going to close up. Grab your duck cell. even trench in the center. Again, thin toward the end, thicker in the middle. These are fake duck cell, by the way. Anybody out there watching in France, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Mike won't eat spinach and feta, which is really what I like stuffing it with. Oh my god, it's incredible! Alright, so, we've got this done, right? Again, rinse off your hands if you can. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take this piece of plastic here, we're gonna wrap it over the top, and very slowly and gently, we're gonna meet them at the bottom. Whatever falls out the side, don't worry about it. You don't need every single morsel in there. And you squeeze the ends closed. See what I'm doing here? I'm squeezing the ends closed, and then I'm wrapping it up tight, like, I don't know, like what? Just, just watch and figure it out for yourself. All right? You wrap up the uh, paper here and squeeze it together. You put it upside down and kind of remember where the bottom is. Now, I have an open end here. Can you see that? So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to stuff it. This is going to be the bottom of my meatloaf because if you leave this up top, what you're going to get. <laughs> is an open meatloaf with a lot of crap pouring out of it. All right, so I'm basically just pinching it all together, pinching it shut. All right, so now she's shut up. All right, wrap your stuff over here. Uh, I like to do this neatly and clean. If you want to make a mess out of the other piece, it's up to you. But I got certain OCDs and there's not much I can do about it by now. All right, open yourself up another one. Same size, turn it to the side. It takes practice, folks. It looks easy, but it takes practice. Put these out here. Alright. Wrap it one more time and watch this. Watch it up, watch it up. Roll it up, make it nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Now that is a meatloaf. And guess where she's gonna cook? She's gonna cook right in the middle of a pan. Not in some bread pan in her own fat and crap. She's going to cook right in the middle of the pan, like a pretty loaf. Alright? So, what I do now, I'm not ready to cook her yet. It's 5.10, Mike won't be home until 7. So, I'm going to stick her in the oven right now. I'm going to stick her in the fridge right now. And this is my bottom, because that's where my seam is for my last one. So, this is the bottom. I'll show you how to open her up in a little bit. Right now... Just gonna cool it down. And all the while, the potatoes Andrew have been sitting in the pan doing what they do best, which is cooking. All right. Normally, I would do this with the lid on, but since I'm a trained professional, I'm gonna flip them around myself, make a mess of my own stove. You see, that's the good thing about potatoes Andrew. It doesn't really make a good mess of the stove if you leave the lid on. Just, oh, you know what? Let's just check these potatoes. Check them by feel. Most chefs cook with their fingers. Alright, and they just sit there. It's been about 30, 35 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start uh, a gravy, a quick gravy. And I'm going to start that by grabbing myself a little pan. Remember the juice that was left over from the mushrooms? I'm going to pour that into the pan. Looks much bigger than it actually is, doesn't it? All right, and I'm gonna finish that off with some beef stock. And I'm gonna pour that in there and give it about maybe 40%, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, about, about 50 to 60% of what was in there. All right, give it a little taste. Okay, that is gonna make a lovely gravy. What you do now 
is you turn it on to light simmer and we're going to reduce that down by about half so all those flavors uh, will increase as the liquid decreases. So we're about there, uh, just under the rivets and I'll show you where we're going to be at soon. Um, it's always a good idea to put in some parsley in there and a uh, bay leaf. A little salt and pepper. Bye. Okay, so here we go. Here come the magic. Alright, now your uh, uh, meatloaf is nice and hard again. Alright, grab whatever you want to moisten up your pan a little bit. I like to use olive oil because it's got a nice high burning temperature. It gives a decent flavor and it releases pretty well. Some people like that stuff in the can. I guess it's okay. Depends on where you think it's coming from. Right, I use a little too much oil here. I don't want to have my thing frying in grease in the bottom. It's going to have enough of its own stuff. Alright. Oh wow. So that's what came on the radio. That's a little better. <laughs> I didn't know that was the next one coming. All right, so you remember you got your outside, uh, you got your outside plastic. So you can take that one off fairly safely. All right, and this is your bottom. So your outside plastic starts at the top, hopefully. All right, and then you're going to open yourself up to your bottom. All right, and then what you do is you just take that little cradle there, and just dump it up on top. Just dump it upside down. And there you go. That's the magic. Did I miss that? I probably lost that over there, didn't I? Alright, whatever it is. Even it out so that it cooks evenly. However, if you have some people who like it rare and some people who like it well, then you make it thinner at the ends and thicker in the middle. You'll get rare in the middle and well done at the ends. See? A nice even meatloaf. I, uh, I'm not going to throw any salt on there. Usually I, I throw a little bit of salt on top just to give it a little bit of uh, that salt crust flavor, you know. But remember when I uh, overdumped the soy sauce, so I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to throw a little pepper on top. And I'm going to throw her in the oven for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it takes. Um, and I've still got my... Uh, gravy over there simmering and rendering down we've got potatoes Andrew which are finished and ready to go all I need to do is reheat them for about eight minutes uh, after I take out the roast or the roast uh, the, the meatloaf and um, dinner will be ready I can go pick up Mike and by the time I get back the meatloaf will be finished and there you have it kids what appears to me to be the perfect meatloaf. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take it out and you're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes while you heat the oven up to 400 so that you can put your dinner rolls in. And we're going to turn the potatoes back on so we can get those finished off. And in order to keep this uh, uh, warm enough to eat in about 10 or 15 minutes, you want to cover it with tin foil. So, okay, so now we got Mike bitching that dinner isn't ready the second he walked in the door. Sometime tonight would be nice. Even though I had to go 1,800 miles to the train station to go get him. I'm so, aging over here. What I'm doing is I'm just waiting for this, uh, for this uh, uh, mixture over here to boil. Remember, that's my gravy. I'm making a quick cheesy gravy. Uh, and it ain't cheesy, it's just cheesy in that it's quick. And I'm sorry for the bad angle, but that's uh, tough. It is well, a crappy kitchen. Hungry. Whatever. Listen, you. Quiet down. Where's my... I don't want to hear any crap. Get in that, get in that kitchen and rather than pots and pans. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dick. And you better look goddamn good doing it, so. I hope you remember this, you people, at my funeral. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some cornstarch... And I'm going to put it into some cool stock, not hot stock, but cool stock. Uh, the reason I'm using stock instead of water is because, you know, stock is better than water. It's not as good as soup, but it's better than water. And you stir that up. And as you can see, my pot is just about to boil. I can see a little steam coming off the top. 
Alright, I'm going to throw in a little salt. Actually, a little more salt because it didn't have quite as much as I needed. A little pepper because that's what goes in all the time. Okay. A touch of sage because that's the major flavor in our meat tonight. But just a, a touch. Stir your slurry. Pour it in. About half that amount. You know, have, uh, it's, it's about maybe uh, an eighth of a cup. And you bring that to a quick boil. And as it comes to a boil, you will notice it start to thicken. This is not how I normally make gravy. I normally make it with a roux, but I didn't want to take the extra time because Michael's hungry. <laughs> but you'll see that the sauce has thickened up. It's kind of uh, uh, glossy, and you can see through it. That's how you'll always know that a sauce is thickened up with uh, cornstarch. And then you turn it off, because if you boil it too long, you want to boil it for like a minute or less. If you boil it too long, you'll break down the cornstarch, and it'll go back to being the au jus that it was. Alright, so we've got our gravy. We have our potatoes, Andrew. All finished. Mmm. And we've got our artisan rolls, which came from your grocer's freezer. Just stick them into the oven at 400 degrees for about 8 to 10 minutes, and you have fresh baked bread. And now, we'll cut this open. Mike, can you come hold the camera? Hold on a second. Mike will be here to hold the camera. Ugh. Ugh. I want them to see what the inside looks like. Are you ready? I use a serrated knife to cut my meatloaf for obvious reasons. And inside... Are the mushroom duck cells <gasps> beautiful, right? Oh, that looks great! Mushroom duck cell with pine nuts. You know, I'm really hungry. And if you want it to stay together, pardon my fingers, but they're attached to my hand. Hold it together. Don't try to be a hero and get every single slice out. And then here's how you get the slices onto the plate. Ready? Always give your guests the interior slices. Two at a time, one on top of the other. And there you have it. A couple of potatoes. Whoops. A couple of new potatoes. They're not new, we've had them for a week. Yeah, that's true. Alright, and an artisan roll. A little gravy on the table, and we're set. Voila. Mmm.